Hey, what's going on everybody? So the Hurricanes wrapped up their 13th spring practice. Unfortunately, no viewing for the reporters today. Also, no coaches spoke after practice, but five players did. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the spring game right here at Cobb Stadium. I'm inside, you can see maybe behind me, but they've not yet put the bleachers up as expected this week, which they will obviously do, but today's Tuesday. Games on Saturday, as you can see, four o'clock. So they still haven't released all the details about who's able to go. Uh, so definitely stay tuned to that, but definitely watch on TV if you can't make it out here or not allowed to. In regards to the spring game, there are six true freshmen I think you definitely should have your eyes on. Guys that I'll be watching to see how they perform. You know, they've been here in spring ball, they participate throughout spring practices, and they're looking to not only make an impact in the game, but really prove to the coaches that they can earn a role on this team in some capacity for the season. I think going into the summer, the off season, you definitely want to kind of end the spring on a positive note. And certainly there's upperclassmen guys that you really want to watch and see how they do. All eyes will be on quarterback Cam Ward transferring in. What kind of impact will he make even in the spring game? Get a chance to see him. Obviously a guy like Isaiah Horton, a wide receiver, taking the next step, you know, kind of getting that lead role. Will he be able to take that jump? But to me, the six true freshmen you want to keep your eyes on in the spring games. Let's start with the offensive side of the ball. Two wide receivers, JoJo Trader and Nykar. And with JoJo, what's been a lot of fun is just seeing, even a one-on-one, -on -one, seeing his talent translate to this level. Zaquan Patterson, the safety. Another guy in this six that you definitely want to pay attention to. But he spoke after practice today, and he was saying that it's just been good. You know, JoJo's been able to do the things that he did in high school here at the college level and he's enjoying even being a safety and he is facing a lot of tight ends so he's not going up against jojo very often but he's noticing him obviously quite a bit one-on-ones and just kind of going against him and he's doing a great job so you'll get a chance to see jojo i think he has a chance to make plays i think that's a big thing you want to see the offense make some plays in the passing game with cam but you'd like to see some of these guys like a jojo trader you know get behind the defense show off that speed that he has show off that talent and really come down with some big plays you know with his role on this team he's looking to kind of be in that second group that second pairing of, of wide receivers and i definitely think he can be and then with night car i keep touching on him he's just a guy that once he gets the ball thrown his way he's doing a good job of coming down with the catch you know and, and the other day i thought this was interesting i didn't make mention of it because i'm watching a lot of the stuff that he's doing downfield and the things that he's able to do in the contested catches on one-on-one -on -one situations but jojo said that Nye actually does a really good job in space as well. You know, he's a guy making moves. So to me, that will be something to maybe watch for in the spring game. Not just, you know, can he come down with these contested, impressive catches, but can he make guys miss? Because to me, that'll be something that can really uh, add to his game in, in addition to his pass catching ability. And speaking of guys coming down with catches, you know, Elijah Lofton, the tight end, has done a good job this spring of really fitting in and making plays. And he's the third offensive player to watch for at tight end. And definitely if you're coming to the game or even if you're watching, especially if you're coming to the game, I recommend either printing off a roster so you can know who's out here. I wouldn't expect that they'll be handing out rosters or anything like that. So that, that is, would be my uh, advice to, to, for people that are coming out here and not sure who to watch and, and, and whatnot, but definitely, Get yourself a roster, uh, definitely, especially a lot of new guys on the team, even, even guys coming back have changed their numbers. So Lofton's been able to make some plays. I think it'll be interesting to see, and I'm not quite sure where he's gonna fall on the depth chart. I know the staff really likes him, but there's just other guys in front of him, and there's a lot more to tight end, especially for young tight ends to grasp, as opposed to just catching the ball. I just think it's a very difficult position. Again, they've got guys in front of them, Elijah Royo, you know, obviously back for another year, and Riley Williams, gained some experience last year. I know Riley's impressed with what Elijah Lofton's been able to do, but there's just, you just have to make sure you learn a lot and be able to apply yourself as a blocker and not just as a receiver. And then defensively, there's three guys, one at each level, defensive end and Marquise Lightfoot, linebacker and Cam Pruitt goes by Bobby, and then also at safety, as I mentioned, with Zaquan Patterson. And staying with Zaquan, you know, I asked him after practice about his special teams abilities because he obviously excelled in base defense, did a, did a great job. He's a good physical, athletic safety that can make catches on the ball, but also a guy on the special teams that, that makes a lot of plays, blocking kicks, punts, whatever it might be. And I asked him how it translated to the college level, because I know what it's like for special teams players to, once they get into that special teams room at the college level, a lot of details. There's a lot of little things that they really focus on. The coaches really put a lot of emphasis on special teams, where to be, where to block, and how to make plays on all four units. 
and he talked about the details. He said that's been an adjustment. And also he said he's been involved in all four units, wants to be, you know, wants to have a role on those units when the season comes. And I think he's a guy that, that will be. So regardless if he wins the safety spot, if he beats out an upperclassman to earn a starting spot or not, I think he's going to play a lot of games. I can see him playing in every game because I think he's going to be heavily involved in special teams. So you won't get a chance to see that, you know, his work on special teams in the spring game, the way they have it set up, but you'll be able to see him in base defense. I'd like to be able to see him, you know, definitely make some good reads on the ball, whether it's defending the pass or the run, because I think, again, Saquon's got a chance to really earn a role on the base defense. It's just going to be a progression, you know, the spring into the summer off-season program, and then obviously in the fall camp, and even as the season goes on. He's just one of those guys you have to keep your eye on because of his talent and his abilities, and as he continues to grasp the defense, he's really going to have a chance to, to really have a bigger impact as the year goes on, as his freshman calendar year goes on. And then with Cam Pruitt, Bobby Pruitt, he prefers to go by their linebacker, says he's 195, gained about 20 pounds since he arrived in January, which is great. I think he looks great. We saw him there doing interviews without his shoulder pads on. And he said, you know, essentially he was asked, you know, by David Lake with, with Inside the U, was asked about, you know, maybe the keys of being an undersized linebacker. And he said, look, he's going to hit you no matter who you are. You know, that's his mentality. He's got a great understanding. It seems to have a great mindset to his approach to the game, which means applying everything that he's learning from the film study work that they're doing, the meetings onto the field, taking in coaching, but also learning from other players. Really noted that Kiko is doing a great job of really teaching him, really knows the defense inside and out. Uh, used a lot more adjectives of how well he knows it, but he's just trying to learn from him, ask a lot of questions, and then when he gets out there, make plays. So I could see Bobby coming up with a big hit. You know, I could see that happening in the spring game. So definitely watch him and, and see how he moves, you know, and definitely being able to defend the pass will be key for a guy like him who is a bit undersized right now, uh, but also just showing off that ability to be able to guard some tight ends and kind of move around a little bit uh, with, with his range. And then lastly, with, with Marquis Lightfoot, the highest regarded recruit on campus right now. And he's a guy that I think has a chance to make plays in the spring game, like we've seen with other young defensive ends. Definitely keep your eye on Lightfoot. He's a guy with good athleticism off the edge. He's a guy that I think could really like what we've seen with these other young DNs, just really get himself into the defensive rotation at the end spot, especially with Nigel Lee. Kelly deciding to move on, according to report, entering the transfer portal. Didn't see him out here all spring. Missed most of last season due to an injury, and Nigel Lee's moving on. So uh, disappointing, once again, to see another player from that recruiting class. It really hasn't panned out very well at all, which tends to happen at times with transition classes with the new head coach. But it just didn't work out for Nigel League. Decided to move on. Uh, didn't make enough plays when he was in there last year, but without question. But a guy like Lightfoot has a chance to step right in. I know Jaden Wayne, another young defensive end that they're excited about from a year ago. And obviously Ruben Bain. You forget that he's still a young player. But Lightfoot, pay attention to him. Has a chance to maybe get a sack or two. You know, with, with going against that third unit or maybe even a second unit, depending on which offensive line he's going against. But definitely pay attention to Lightfoot because I do like his upside. You know, I think... Again, I think maybe he finds a role. I don't think he's going to have the impact that Bain had a year ago, but I do think he's a guy that maybe can get in there and kind of just stick with the process of being a dev developmental player in this first season with a lot to work on and really earn uh, a lot of coaches' trust as the year goes on. And I think his spring game performance could do well. So those are the six that I'll be paying attention to. I know there's other guys here as well, but I'll be talking a little bit more about the spring game after Thursday's practice which I'm told we are going to get Cam Ward for the first time this spring for an interview. However, I'm not quite sure. We've heard this before. I've talked about it before that it seems like it was coming and it never did, but maybe Thursday, uh, maybe the last practice. I don't expect availability, a viewing period for Thursday's practice, but certainly if there is, I'll be out here doing whatever I can, whatever I'm allowed to do. So thanks for watching. Who are, who are some guys you're looking forward to watching? Either young players, maybe some freshmen I left out. Can't list them all. Want to keep it to the top six that I'll be paying attention to. Definitely drop in the comments below. Thanks for watching. And I'll have some more on Cobb Stadium as it gets ready for the spring game. Thanks again and have a good rest of the day and take care.